Hey everybody, Brandon from CAD Intentions, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at snaps in AutoCAD. I'm gonna be sharing how to set them up, turn them on and off quickly, change up these settings, and how each of the different options works within AutoCAD and or Civil 3D. I'm also gonna share some quick tips and tricks along the way and some bonuses after for how to quickly make edits to drawings, change things, basically a quick refresher for any of you new or jumping back into AutoCAD, this video is gonna have a ton for new users and intermediates alike. I wanna thank Brett for requesting some of these topics. And if you'd like to request some of your own or ask me questions directly, don't forget to check out the CAD support private Discord forum. I'm gonna put a link up above and in the description on how you can join that. Let's jump right into today's video. All right, so starting off, snaps in AutoCAD allow you to snap or lock on to various parts of your drawing and objects when creating new line work or objects. These are gonna save you a ton of time and there's something you definitely need to understand and master early on if you wanna go and make edits to your drawings. Uh, efficiently and more importantly this is going to keep things accurate based on what you actually want to be doing. Now to get started you can tap the F3 button uh, and that's going to turn your snaps or O snaps on or off. That's an object snap and you can also see down on the bottom here when you tap F3 it's going to highlight or uh, remove the highlight from the button. You can also click down here to turn them on and off. If it's blue that's going to have them turned on. Now, hitting the little fly out down arrow next to it there is gonna tell you which snaps are on and allow you to simply click on them to turn them on or off. Now, a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go over a few right now. Now, the endpoint and midpoint snaps are two that you're probably always gonna have turned on, and they're some of the most useful. When you're drawing a polyline or inserting an object or doing pretty much anything, when you start the command, it's gonna allow you to snap to an endpoint. And you can see when I hover over the snap, that's that highlighted little box, that's the snapping motion. Uh, it's gonna tell me what it is. So that's an endpoint of a line or a segment. Over here is another endpoint of this straight segment. Now, if I go towards the middle, it's gonna to snap to the midpoint and that's gonna be designated by a triangle. So you know you're getting the midpoint or center of a line or object. That's super useful when you're trying to draw things quickly, like drawing off of the midpoint over here. Now, the next few settings over here, uh, our center and geometric center. Having those turned on can be useful depending on what you're working with. These work for the center one. That's gonna work for arcs and circles and it's gonna allow you to snap to the center of the arc or center of the circle. Geometric uh, center is going to allow you to snap to the center of things like a hexagon over here. It's gonna highlight geometric center. These are useful for irregular shapes and finding that center where it's not exactly a circle. I typically won't have that one turned on unless I need it. And again, it's as quick as just turning these on and off as you need them. You'll be finding yourself hitting F3 on and off to snap and not snap to objects as you draw things in tighter constrained areas. You don't necessarily want snaps on if you're not trying to specifically snap to a point or somewhere on an object. Next up are node and quadrant. Uh, these are both a little bit different but can be useful. Node is going to allow you to snap to point objects within AutoCAD. Uh, there are a few other things that use these. Um, but you're regularly not going to be using it unless you're using, say, Civil 3D and you need to snap to points specifically. Uh, you can see here uh, when I go to draw a line, see I've got a point here. If you turn on the node option and say start a polyline, it's going to allow me to snap to this node, which is what it calls the point of a point object in AutoCAD. Now you can also see it's designated by that circle with the cross through it. That also helps you when you've got a mess of things and you're trying to snap to a specific point. That's gonna tell you you've hit the point and it's snapped onto it. 
uh, quadrant is also somewhat useful. That's going to allow you to snap to the quadrant, so either the bottom, left, right, or top of a circle or arc. Uh, again, this can be helpful if you're needing to snap to that at those points, but typically I'm going to leave these off until I need them and to reduce accidentally snapping to things I don't need. Intersection is pretty self-explanatory. It's simply going to snap to the intersection of an object. Um, that can be helpful if you don't have an exact spot you need to snap to, but you just need to attach or snap to a line object. Particularly probably helpful for uh, part modeling and uh, mechanical drawings. Uh, extension is what you've seen probably a lot already. When you snap to something and pull the mouse away, it's going to create this extension line and it's going to keep you uh, perpendicular or running along the same line. And you can see when I come back to it, that extension lights up again. And then I can draw from there and I know that this line will connect to that line because I used an extension to draw it. Again, that one can be helpful, uh, but you're only going to want to have that one on when you need it, most likely. Insertion is one I don't use that often. That's going to allow you to snap to the insertion point of a block. If you're trying to draw based on a ton of blocks you've inserted, this can be useful in kind of a one-time use option. Uh, and perpendicular is going to allow you to snap perpendicularly to another object. So you can see it's going to create a 90 degree angle when you snap to that line. This one is super helpful, especially if you're drawing things like building plans, floor plans, you're going to want all of your objects and line work for say walls and footprints perpendicular to each other uh, most of the time. Next up you've got tangent. This one is useful if you're using say Civil 3D and roughing in or drawing uh, alignments. Your curve and line segments are now uh, tangent to each other. So drawing things like that and then say using the TR command to trim is going to allow you to create nice curves and transitions between different objects. But then say clicking here and using extension, now you've got two tangent lines coming into a curve. This can be super helpful when you're drawing or laying out property lines, alignments, roads, that kind of thing. Um, next up we've got nearest. Nearest simply allows you to snap to the nearest point on an object. So you can see when it's not quite at an end point or a midpoint, it's going to give this kind of figure eight uh, or hourglass symbol and that just means it's snapping to an object just the nearest point to where your mouse is that is also in line with the object you're snapping to. Again, super helpful for keeping things connected and accurate, but one you probably don't want on all the time because it will snap to things that you may not want it to. Apparent intersection is just that. It's going to allow you to snap to where two objects uh, will apparently intersect Again, can be helpful occasionally. And then parallel is going to do uh, what it would, what you would think. It's going to snap the two lines parallel and you just hover over the line you'd like to be parallel to and then go and draw your object nearby. You can see the symbol there, parallel, come out here. It's gonna highlight the line and you know you've got two parallel lines. This can be helpful for things like setbacks and buffers uh, or drawing walls parallel to other walls, keeping everything nice and parallel and perpendicular to each other. So that's it for snaps in AutoCAD. Again, hitting this flyout, turning them on and off is super easy and it's something that I tend to do throughout the day depending on the type of work or what exactly I'm working on in the project. You can also hit the object snap settings to change all of the settings that are down here quickly and easily uh, from one spot. So another cool thing is the uh, ortho and polar tracking and these are two options or tools you're likely going to use quite a bit as well. So ortho you can type or hit the F8 button to turn on and off and that simply locks you to angles that are 90 degrees with each other. So now wherever I draw my mouse it's going to drag it at a 90 degree angle either up down left or right and hitting F8 
unlocks that so I can draw at any angle again. Now this is super useful for floor plans, site plans, that kind of thing. It's going to keep all of your lines perpendicular. F3 and F8 may be the two most used uh, tools or buttons that I'll hit while drawing. I'm constantly turning those on and off as I go if I need them. Um, again, similar to F8 and ortho is polar tracking. You can turn that on by clicking this button here or hitting F10 to turn it on and off. Polar tracking is like ortho. With it on, it's going to snap to various angles. Now, this is adjustable. You can see I've got it set to 30, 60, 90, 120. You can choose 45, so you can see it's only gonna snap at 45 or 90 degree angles, which is super useful. You can again, turn that off by tapping F10, and you can also click down here to change all of the angle settings. By default, it's probably at 90, 180, 270, 360, but you can simply click to change or go into these settings to customize and create your own if you're using something like, say, a shifted UCS or origin for say civil 3d or you just want to have everything at a specific angle you can tweak these for iso drawings and so forth now i think that's everything when it comes down to snaps and orthos and tracking within autocad all of these are going to be things that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis and are worth practicing and memorizing those quick commands to turn them on and off as well as fiddling with these settings until you find what works for you each person's settings are going to vary based on the type of work you're doing but as you can see from all these examples they all have their uses depending on what you need them for now other things that are super useful things like quick commands like the trim command tr these are going to allow you to edit things quickly and easily so you can see how trim works it kind of highlights the segment that it's going to remove when you hover over something uh, you can also draw in lines quickly like this if you want to trim out a specific segment and that'll now trim there and you can delete that. Trim is another super useful command that I use every day. Another great one is the ability to edit vertexes or vertices uh, simply by clicking them. So you can see I've got this line here, pretend that's a uh, building or something. You can click and edit any of these blue vertices but you can also hover and now stretch, add, or remove a vertex. So if I remove, it deletes that point. If I hover over here and add one, it's gonna allow me to add it. Now, those can also be activated by tapping simply the first letter of each command. So A to add, if I hover over this one and type C, it's gonna convert it to an arc. If I hover over an arc and type C again, it's gonna convert it to a line. All of these are super helpful when it comes to making edits quickly and fluently within any drawing in AutoCAD or Civil 3D. Lastly here, before I let you all go, uh, copying objects in AutoCAD is super easy and straightforward. You've got a couple options. The first is simply CO to copy. You hit that and now select an object and hit enter. It's gonna ask for a base point. Now this is where snaps can come in helpful. Uh, snapping to say a specific point and then moving it and snapping to another point is gonna accurately place that new line or copied line. The same goes as if you're using the move command or M. You're gonna wanna snap for a base point, select something that is relatable and usable and then move it using that point. Your other option is to use copy with base point, uh, which would be control shift and C to activate that command. And then you select your base point. What you can also do with that is select a bunch of objects, use control shift and C and type zero comma zero. And that's going to keep the zero zero as your base point. Now, if you copy this into any other drawing, it's going to have the same coordinates as it did in this drawing. This is especially helpful for civil designers like myself. This is gonna keep objects in the same location spatially in one drawing as they are in the previous drawing. So now if I use control V in another drawing, it's going to ask me for my base point or insertion point. If I type in zero comma zero and use the same point as the other drawing, it's going to put it in the exact same spot. So now if I click on this one and move it, you'll see that I have two of these objects. 
in the exact same spot. Now this works in multiple drawings. So if you are to, you were to open a new drawing, use control V and zero comma zero, it's going to place that object or image or XREF, whatever you've copied into your new drawing in the exact same location. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more about AutoCAD, make sure you check out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. I'll put a discounted link up above and down below now. It's got over a decade of experience, tips, tricks, and workflows packed into it in short and easy to understand videos. Everything from XRefs, setting up drawings, templates, working with site plans, creating drawing packages, sheet sets, and more. I think you guys are going to learn a ton. Again, if you'd like to check that out, you can find it at the links down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one. Cheers.